Hey, this is my clock room. Oh my God, yes, totally unfinished and just, I built some shelves just to put some of my boxes on. I got literally probably a hundred boxes through here and into the other room with parts and clocks and tools and and all the good things. Uh, next month, uh, we will be finishing out the walls in here and putting the wall board in and the electrical, and that's the one thing I was... I've been working on is getting my electrical plan put together and uh, putting a sink in water so uh, February is do or die for getting the old man's uh, the colonel's clock room hooked up so I can get back to repairing clocks and working on watches uh, I have a significant investment in tools and uh, actually I love doing this kind of stuff so I'm pretty excited to get this squared away. Is the series AJ and AB fuel and vacuum pump. Those of you familiar with the half track know that you're uh, you have a dual pump here. So on the bottom, you have your fuel pump, fuel in, fuel out. We got which is this little. Uh, dome here which is kind of equal to a uh, expansion tank which you would find on the system the upper portion is your vacuum pump uh, this basically runs your um, windshield uh, and, and it also goes into your carburetor um, so what we need to do is tear all this down get it into our uh, cleaning machine and what I'm uh, using is the uh, ultrasound I have several ultrasounds because that's how I clean watches and cloth mark edges of fuel cover and body diaphragm flanges with a file mark a heat shield stud if used this does not use a heat shield stud however the M37 pump does use a heat shield stud because of where it sits in relation to the exhaust manifold Parts may then be reassembled in the same relative position. Note that the fuel diaphragm flange is symmetrical and the vacuum diaphragm flange has bulges where the screw holes occur. Okay, so the flange here is symmetrical. The vacuum pump, I'm sorry, it's got little bulges and it's because of the setup is much different. So, uh, hey baby, so I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to grab my tools and start tearing into this thing and we'll start tearing it down for cleanup.
got that's what they're looking at going in run this thing for probably 30 minutes I may run it more than one cycle uh, I'm using like a one and a one to uh, two ratio so uh, on the cleaning fluid we'll see how that works I may have to bump it up but uh, I want to get this stuff all cleaned up that's nasty just want to see how it does all right we've got uh, this cleaned up oops as I was and uh, using my ultrasound it cleaned up very very nicely considering what it looked like all the components here's my ultrasound I have three of these they are uh, from the 70s uh, I've, I've bought uh, two or three I guess individuals out over the years uh, and all their clock and watch making stuff and uh, so I've picked these up um, I know that uh, Harbor Freight sounds, sells a small ultrasound. This thing here is, is rather large and uh, um, I love it. It's got a drain in the back. Um, and actually when I get my room set up I'll have a, a sink and stuff in here. One thing about ultrasounds is um, you got to keep them whatever you're using for cleaning fluid or even if it's just water and, you, and you've got your cleaning fluid in a, in a small container which you can do and weight down and stick in here I do that for watches because I certainly the the uh, solutions that I use for watches there's two of them uh, they're expensive so I don't waste them and uh, I don't use large volumes I don't need to but uh, you got transducers that uh, that operate on this thing and then a heater and if you don't keep your uh, water levels up high enough you'll burn your transducers out your transducers out as I was also you've got a uh, pretty much the same thing like you find a heating element a toaster embedded in insulation in here so uh, when you hook this thing up there we go and then you uh, you get your water hot enough or in this case I'm using the solution of uh, um, I think it's green is what I, I mentioned to you and I got the uh, HD which is actually friendly to metals um, some of these solutions will actually eat your metal up if you leave stuff in there too long. I mentioned that I bought two kits. One is a, a, a newer kit. Uh, it just it does, and then one was a World War II kit. World War II kit comes with a lot of stuff that the newer kits don't. Uh, it comes with all the arms, the linkages. Comes with a lot of gaskets. Unfortunately, this one was broken in there, but that's not going to matter because I'll use some sealer on it. You got two of them. That's one thing about kits. The older kits, if it's cork, it can be dried out. Now, you can soak them and rehydrate them. Uh, I, don't, I don't see the need for that because, in this case, and, and they'd still be usable uh, if, if you use a little sealer on them. In, in this case, the, the newer kit came with uh, a lot new... Uh, newer uh, cork fresher cork not an issue the old-fashioned kit came with this uh, I'm sorry that screen set up and the newer kit comes with this screen set up now this will work but it doesn't have the framework that the old ones did and uh, actually I just clean this one up and it's um, it's just got some staining This is what the newer kit came with. Again, that's stained as I was. But the original one was in really good shape, and again, I just cleaned it. The one thing the original kit doesn't come with is a seal. This seal is shot. Basically, this is a seal that sits in uh, your pump here and uh, your diaphragm arm. Your diaphragm arm here runs through that seal and uh, it didn't come with that but the new kit did now it's not the same kind of a seal but it came with two of them the old kit and the new kit uh, correction the old kit was designed for half tracks and scout cars so the fuel pumps a little different on a scout car 
and it's clearly marked that way. So uh, it may have two or th two seals versus just the one seal we have here. Also, the uh, newer kit came with a uh, rubber seals for the vacuum side. The original vacuum seal was leather. This comes with two pieces of leather, and this is this is original leather, and it's just destroyed. Uh, so this comes with new, or you can use neoprene. I'm going to use the neoprene. I like the neoprene. New kit comes with, uh, these are our one-way uh, valves, open and closed depending on how they sit in the, uh, the old kit comes with four too. These are made of brass, these are made of steel. Uh, the volumes are a little different. If you'll notice, this is, this is segmented. It's got a much larger ID than the originals. And uh, the material is different. Again, we got brass versus steel. So you've got you've got gaskets that fit in there first. These are the old set gaskets. They're very thin. The new set gaskets are really thick. I went with the thicker ones. Uh, I just think they're going to seal better. So God given, uh, go ahead and reassemble this. It also comes with the old kit again. This is all old kit components. Come with new screws and uh, brand new brackets. Brackets are, I've got a slight rise in them. Basically what you've got there is it sets on top of both valves, holds them into place against your washers. Here's for the vacuum side. There's a new gasket that fits in there nicely and eventually that will fit on here. That's the vacuum side. There's washers for that. Okay, uh, now what I've got to do is I've got to assemble my uh, diaphragms. You got two diaphragms, you got one for fuel. The old kit actually comes with all the new pieces. If you want to, if you want to uh, take your fuel pump down that much, you basically can do so. And uh, you can actually put new spring in, etc, 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 if you require it. It's not always necessary. Uh, fortunately, my, uh, my main body, the spring and everything, the action itself, moves very freely. You can see these arms moving in here. One set of arms is for vacuum. The other single arm is for the uh, fuel pump. Here's a new diaphragm. I also have a new for my other kit. And uh, it's in actually pretty good shape. And I, I'm going to go ahead and give a shot for that. Here's a problem with this new kit. They send you a diaphragm, but how are you supposed to install this diaphragm onto your mechanism? Uh, your old mechanism... You can't take it apart. It's basically this is this copper piece is one piece that went in and sat into it, and then they slugged it down. And I don't have I don't have a new operating arm. If they sent a new operating arm with even if it had a nut and a bolt, you know, like through, and you could go ahead and put this together and then uh, lock tight it down and in, that would be awesome. But they don't. So although they send you a diaphragm. They don't send you anything to install it with. You don't send you any parts. So it's kind of a screwball deal. And, and actually, it's, it's kind of frustrating. I had to get a flashlight just so I could see where the darn arms were lining up in there. Video, and I realized that uh, really, because I sped some of the stuff up because it was just taxing, if not, if not just boring to watch. So just a couple things I wanted to go over here with our diaphragms. Um, You can observe where your uh, diaphragms actually come in. You can observe it and see it. And, and what I would recommend when you we're putting these things together, of course, you'll have your your bowls off. You'll have the main diagram body. You have two levers, and then you have a single lever that operates the diaphragms. The double lever is for your uh, vacuum pump. Now, when you've got this thing off, you can see right inside. You can put your. I recommend going with your vacuum pump first because you've got to go over two levers, not one, two. And it's it's actually, you know, significantly 
different than setup. Go ahead and install that. Of course, once you do that, um, and you start to install your pump, you're going to lose, you're not going to be able to see it from there, like you could on the top where you could be uh, installing your vacuum pump. But what you can do is you can actually peek in here, and you can observe your diaphragm being put in, and you can see where your levers are. Uh, if you have a bright lamp, that'd be awesome. Otherwise, you can just take a look with a flashlight. You can also adjust the height of your lever up and down by inserting a screwdriver or anything else, and you can actually push on the cam, the operating cam, and you can position it. Now, you're going to find that <clears throat> when you put your vacuum pump diaphragm in, um, it's kind of it's kind of a challenge because it's uh, it's uh, you've got to push down pretty hard to get it lined up and put it in with the with the two operating cams. But with the um, vacuum pump, it's actually very easy to install it as far as lining it up, and you don't have to go down as far. Surprisingly, when you finish, your uh, your diaphragm will be up a little bit. Um, so we're talking again now. Part two. So we're talking about lining our, you've got two of these that sit in there for the vacuum pump and you want to, you know, you're going to want to get that. So that's, that's the one you want to get on first because that's the most challenging. Just when you're putting it in. You've got it. You've got to have it at an angle to get it in, and you don't have that much room there because of the size of your uh, your your uh, orifice. So that's the darn thing in. So you want to get it at an angle, get it in, flip it over. Once it's in, of course, there's a spring. You've got a spring you install that keeps the tension on it. Now you've got to get your fuel pump, which is pretty much set up this way, with this in the center. Now you've got to get your fuel pump in there. And depending on your, uh, yeah, see this one here has actually got a little bit of a bend in it, not much, but depending on how it's set up in there, maybe it may be sprung to one side or the other. That being said, you can go ahead and manipulate it with the screwdriver inside the cavity as you're putting this in. Now you're not going to be able to see anything, of course, because you've, you've covered up your sight line. But you, there again, you can go ahead and get this thing maneuvered in there. And with a little bit of push, in and up, there you go. And you don't have to push it down as far. This thing, you got to cram it all the way in. I mean, you got this is, first of all, it's got a shorter operating lever, an arm here. That's much longer by at least uh, probably half an inch. So you, you, you don't have to struggle as hard. So I just want, so, and that's the hardest part of this whole business is getting your diaphragms in and lined up. So, we'll insert this in the movie before I publish it. Thanks for watching. Okay, so now we have to reassemble our, our top piece. We need to get our screen in here. Yes, and we are using the original style screen. Just because it's got the support. Let me close up here as I was. You know what? It's got to go under the gasket, though. Let's take our gasket out. Now, put our screen in. Then we put our gasket on. I thought I'd done such a masterful job of marking these things. And here I am. Yeah, that makes sense.
I'm going to go ahead and put my sealer on here, put this into place. I'm going to rough in my uh, fuel pickups. All right, we've got four items to put on, two brass and one steel. we got to put our uh, dash pot on here. Make sure whatever you use, uh, are using gasket, cement, etc., 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 is uh, oil and gas resistant because there's stuff out there that is not. Then get ugly. Put that lot on here. Make sure you don't get it in your holes. Teflon tape, yeah, a lot of people use enough Teflon tape. That's good too. Depends on what you're doing. I use this, uh, probably put Teflon in it. I get it out in the garage for like all my gas fittings and stuff. So when I do the carburetor and I put the gas lines on, or the gas line here, I will definitely be using some of that. I like that stuff. Life is good. I've had some interesting contacts though from people and I think I'm going to end up changing my, uh, my status to a 5013C for educational purposes because I do take my stuff to schools and programs and, and I have somebody that's interested in a sponsorship but I need to have that squirt away before I could do that. So, I'm definitely interested in that. I'm digging that. Alright, so this is the front. This comes in from the fuel side. This goes up to the carb. And you know what? I don't like... There we go. I was looking for the ones with the angles. I knew I had ones with the angles. I want angles. That's interesting. I've got... There we go. The old set, the World War II set, comes with angles. The new set, straight up. Uh-uh. We want the angles. You want to have a little bit of room to work with down there when you're trying to put these uh, lines and stuff on. Finish this up. Go ahead and get our gasket installed and allow my brother the honor of putting this back in. <laughs> nicely. I gotta tell you the, the other uh, the other uh, gasket came with the new kit is much thicker. I'm going to go ahead and go with that. Vacuum. Fuel side. Flux expansion chamber. I've got to go ahead and tight, tighten these up and then I have a flexible line. This basically sits in the track like this. So this is the line runs up to the carburetor. This needs to be come around and, and uh, goes to a flexible line that runs back to my fuel line. Up for the vacuum line. This is for my windshield wiper on this side. Um, this basically goes to my uh, manifold half track, but I, uh, it's a really thin gasket material, and the uh, the new kit comes with a much thicker, heavier gasket material. So that's what I'm going to go with. I think that's probably what I had on there before. Um, good movement on the pump. pleased with that. Uh, got my brass fittings into place. Got this new seal in there which was uh, kind of a unique hybrid and this actually this uh, the new kit came with two of them. Actually I'm quite pleased with how it came out. It, you know, it really cleaned up. Um, I could wire brush the heck out of it I guess and get it really shiny but it's just not necessary. 
AC Dalkles were probably just they were nice looking, but I don't need I don't need it shiny. I need it I need it functional. <laughs> My track's not shiny. Shaft. This is really fascinating. I don't know if you could see it. They use horsehair. Believe it or not, they use horsehair for a filter here. That's an intake there. That is horsehair. That's the material they use just to filter the air that goes into the uh, pump. Openings on both sides, and you can see the horsehair filter inside of it. That is that is old school. All right, we'll start the car project next. As usual, hey, thanks for subscribing, and uh, please do if you don't. If you haven't, it, it just helps us out. And uh, as always. Thanks for watching. Bye.